Hey Marty, I'm going to do a little video on gas laws and stuff. Are you game to help me out again? Dude, I'm cool with that, but don't try to kill me again. Yeah, yeah, I know we had a little malfunction with that deal, but you, you recovered. I was hoping you'd kind of forget about that whole thing. I won't be seeing any lights at the end of the tunnel, will I? We'll be really, really careful. Nothing like that will happen again. So you're in? It's a starring role, you know. Okay, but only if it adds to my resume as a leading man. Gas laws are a way to measure quantitatively the relationship between pressure, volume, and temperature. For these gas laws, it means that as two are variable, one of these characteristics must remain constant. The grandkids helped Marty and I with a little experiment with a balloon outside. Hey, Mr. A, watch those power lines. Don't worry, Marty. You're such a worrywart. Yeah, you're right. I can fly like a bird, like a marshmallow bird. I'm king of the world. Yeah, Mr. A, thanks for watching out for me so carefully with that deal. Are you going to make s'mores? I don't know. <laughs> s'mores, dude, get them away from me. Well, while Marty relaxes and recovers, let's take a look at the gas law that describes the relationship between pressure and volume. Taking an initial pressure times an initial volume, that's equal to a secondary or final pressure and volume. A little bit of algebra and you can solve for either P or V. This is called Boyle's Law. As pressure goes up, volume goes down and vice versa. So it's an inverse relationship. Here I demonstrate with a vacuum pump how a balloon, when pressure is taken away, the volume will increase. Temperature, of course, remains constant. And you can think of a marshmallow as being pure sugar with a bunch of tiny bubbles or balloons. Here's that demonstration that Marty was complaining so much about earlier. We're putting him in the vacuum chamber and removing most of the air from around his marshmallows. And you can see what happens. As the bubbles of gas inside the marshmallows expand, eventually they get to a point where they burst, just like the balloon. So certainly when the surrounding atmospheric pressure is released back into the vacuum chamber, you can see the result it had on poor Marty. That brings us to our next gas law, that involves volume and temperature, again with an initial volume and temperature and a final or secondary volume and temperature. Here, temperature must be measured in Kelvin. What unit you use for volume really doesn't matter as long as it remains the same on either side of the equal sign. Again, you can solve for either of the volumes or either of the temperatures given that pressure remains constant. This is Charles' law. And if you do the math or think of examples in everyday life, you can see that as volume goes up, so does temperature. Volume goes down, so does temperature, or vice versa. This is a direct relationship. Here we demonstrate with an ordinary balloon filled with air and liquid nitrogen which has a boiling point very close to absolute zero. As the air inside the balloon approaches that boiling point of liquid nitrogen, the molecules of air slow down radically, which means they stop hitting the inside of the balloon so much. So you can see the result is that when the balloon or the air in the balloon heats back up at room temperature, the molecules start moving around much more energetically, hitting the inside of the balloon and reinflating the balloon to its original size and shape. Given that a latex balloon is fairly elastic, 
we could count pressure as remaining constant in this case. Marty helped me with a little experiment with the freezer at home, but it didn't work too well. Let's look now at the relationship between pressure and temperature. Again, a change is involved going from an initial to a final state. P1, T1, P2, T2. Temperature again must be in Kelvin, otherwise you've got these nasty negative numbers to deal with when you're trying to do the algebra. So Kelvin it must be. I'm sure you all remember to convert from degrees Celsius to Kelvin, you add 273. For this sort of calculation, you would figure that volume would remain constant. Like with a tire on your car and tr or truck, it really doesn't expand uh, when you put more air in it. It stays the same size, so volume is constant. This is called Guy Lussac's Law, and there is a direct relationship between pressure and temperature. Marty reminds us here that if a tire on a car or truck gets too hot, it can blow out because the volume remains the same. Hey Marty, you're looking like a little Michelin man. How cool is that? Yeah, whatever, just get my good side, okay? Marty, hang tough for just a second. I gotta, I gotta move the truck. I gotta back it up so I can get out of the way. Oh no. Oh well, I was trying to get a little thinner, but this isn't what I had in mind. Marty, doggone it, stop goofing around. What are you doing under there? Don't worry, it's not as bad as it looks. Hey kids, watch Marty for me while he's under the weather, okay? We like Marty. Oh, and me too. He's yummy. Well, that sounds a little suspect, but ah, oh, he'll be fine. Marty will be fine. Let's look at the relationship between Boyle's Law, Guy Lussac's Law, and Charles' Law. Combining these gas laws is real handy because uh, all three conditions can change when you're solving for a variable rather than just two. So this is what's termed the combined gas law. Watch your algebra and make sure you use Kelvin for temperature. Here again, a change is involved unlike the ideal gas law that we'll talk about later. Hey, what happened to Marty? <laughs> what do you do with him? <laughs> now they've really done it. This is the worst. I can't feel my legs. My legs! That Marty, he's dramatic enough. Well, Boyle's Law. Remember, that's pressure times volume. Charles, volume divided by temperature. Guy Lussac's, pressure divided by temperature. And the combined gas law. Pressure times volume divided by temperature. Lussac! Yum. Yeah.